Let's do some news. My name is Mike B, AKA Phony. Today's date is June 14th, 2019. This is the Father's Day special of Just News. Do with that information uh, whatever you wish. Maybe call your pappy. Or just say Happy Father's Day to me. I'll take it. Uh, surprise, subscribe to Big Chungus. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about E3. Uh, and some other things. Now, E3, we're not going to talk about individual games that were announced at E3 because there were a lot. Uh, I, di I didn't even manage to get through all the keynotes. I'm still, like, not done with the Xbox One. I haven't even started uh, Bethesda, but I did watch the Doom, uh, uh, Doom Eternal uh, segment of it. Uh, and I did not watch uh, Devolver Digital. I, did I never watched Devolver Digital because all the memes are basically show up everywhere else after their conference. And so I feel like there's no reason to watch it. Like half their games I don't really like anyways. And so, I was, so I really just kind of just watched the, 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 the super cut at the end, um, with all the memes and shit. Uh, that's really the best thing that you get out of that. Uh, and, but I did end up watching a number of other ones. And the, what I took away from it was that there's just so many fucking games that are coming out over the next two years. We have had a couple, I don't think there is really, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of any game that was actually announced in 2021, but I made a list of all the, of all the dates and everything. Uh, and not a single one actually since 2021, but lots and lots of games 2020. Uh, as a matter of fact, something like, uh, just between the Microsoft presentation, a PC game show and Nintendo, uh, 16 of the titles were for 2020. And to put that in perspective, uh, 32 of them I have listed as being for this year. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are kind of generalizing. It's like, oh man, every, every single game is not going to be released this year. Not true. Not true. Now, some of the biggest games, yes, they're not going to be released until next year. But this is always the case with E3. It Maybe it's just because it feels like 2020 is so far away. But newsflash, 2020 is next year. 2020 is less than six months away. And that just sounds weird saying. So yeah, it maybe feels like all these games at E3 are not coming forever. Uh, but the reality is, yeah, they're, they're, it's just next year. <laughs> it's just it's always just next year uh, with E3. And in this case, it's pretty much uh, the same. So this year is already going fast enough. I know it's just fucking moving right along, isn't it? It's just seriously just moving right along. It's just it's always June 14th. It's already already halfway through the damn year. So the biggest news to come out of, of E3, oh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, okay, 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 yes, I do stand corrected on that, thank you, Han, for a number of those titles that have a release date of next year, and also happen to be, uh, Epic Game Store exclusive, which, not as many as you would have thunk, given the fact that their name was all over the PC game show, um, you have to add an additional year on top of that. So if you're not into the EGS, then you have to wait an additional year on top of the um, the already existing uh, delay for the initial game for the game to get released. Now, most of the EGS exclusive games that I have on my list from the and again, this is just kind of like a makeshift list. I just kind of went through and just typed it out as I was watching. Um, most of them have a release date of 2019, I think. Could be lying, though. Like, for example, I pull up Chivalry 2, and it says EGS Exclusive 2020, which means, as Han said, 2021 is when when you could expect to see that on other platforms. Uh, on one of the platforms on PC, that is. But it's okay, Morehouse is pretty good. Like, really good, so that'll hold you over just fine. Uh, don't buy a game that goes EGS Time Exclusive and push back against shitty practices. I know, I already gave Clay, uh, I already gave Clay a piece of my mind as best I could through Twitter, um, because I was disappointed in their excuse, in their excuse, I'll, I'll, I'll pull, I'm gonna pull it up right, I'm gonna pull it up right now, I'm gonna show you guys, all right, because I want to pull up their link too, um, let me see, da, 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 da. how long ago was that, not too long, let's see, Clay, nope, spelled it all wrong, Clay, wow, it was, I tweet a lot, apparently, Jesus, shut the fuck up, Mike B, god damn, Clay, still can't find it, okay, well, uh, well, let's just say, <laughs> Cause I can't find the fucking link where I talked to them. Um, uh, let's see. How funny. Yeah. 
I can't find I can't find my tweet where I tweeted at them. That wasn't even that long ago. I wonder why. Just fucking blind. So, anyways, uh, their their reasoning was that it's not it's the alpha release that is um that it's going to be coming out on the Epic Game Store with the actual release coming later. So I don't know. They try to spin it in some weird way. That I mean, but really, if you look at the history of Clay Games, they always release an alpha. Right? They did it with Oxygen Not Included. They did it with um, Don't Starp, obviously. Uh, this is just how they trend. Uh, thank you, Sam. Man, I don't know why I couldn't find this thing. Was I not talking to Clay? Who's I talking? I was. Why didn't it pull it up on my on my timeline? That's so weird. I, I, I have mentions and everything. Let me see. Tweets and replies. Whatever. I think my control F is just broken. So, thank you so much, Sam. Damn, I'm good. Your control F is way better than mine. So I said, what's the delay for non-EGS PC releases? So I opened this thing. This is the thread where they basically discuss this thing in a little bit more depth. Uh, and they do say, Alpha and the Epic Games Store. As with our previous games, we were running Alpha period for in order to iron out the kinks. We have partnered with Epic to bring Alpha of Grifflens to the Epic Games Store exclusively for one year. And we'll launch an early access on Steam next June. Uh, and so, real quick, actually, though, this is then going to be a 2020 release. Um, again, the 2020 seems so far away. Uh, Clay has a history of partnering with new distribution platforms and starting new projects. For example, the Don't Starve Alpha was only available on the Chrome Web Store, and the Invisible Ink Alpha uh, was only available through the Humble Widget as a direct download. After rebooting the game, Epic approached us as a partner, and we felt that it fit well with our process of going from Alpha to garner feedback and before putting it on all platforms. I love Clay. I absolutely love Clay. I... I, I got to say that this is not, uh, this is, this is contradictory to what they've discussed in the past. Um, and I actually pulled it up, uh, when talking to them, uh, this is, I said, I have to be honest. I don't find the comparison of don't start being on the Chrome web store as being an app comparison to launching on EGS. You guys went with Chrome because it gave you an easy way to distribute to both PC and Mac players. Your words. It was a new platform for us and it allowed us the major benefit of easily providing the game to both PC and Mac users on a single platform. So while I understand that they really wanted that, you know, hundreds of thousands of guaranteed sales money from, from Epic Game Store, uh, which, which we, we pretty much have confirmation that that is what they're offering courtesy of, let me pull up this other tweet here and we get this link. Na, 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 do, do, do courtesy of uh, uh, SNK, where they said, uh, the Kuroki director said, some PC download platform wanted an exclusive release in the condition of a pre-order of hundreds of thousands, but SNK CEO rejected because he thought Samurai Showdown will be for sale for millions of copies. Now, this is obviously um, uh, a, a translation here, but... This is, this is in such a way, uh, a kind of, you could say, loose confirmation that, uh, that Epic is offering in the terms of sales of hundreds of thousands of, uh, 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 of copies as a guarantee. And the way that works, if it's not entirely clear, is that they will basically give them the money ahead of time of what would be equivalent to the sales of, let's just say, 100,000 copies of the game, essentially guaranteeing the income of that amount. Because... Cause it's a gamble. It's, it's, it's a gamble for a developer to go out and say, um, you know what, let's put this game out there and let's hope that we can sell a hundred thousand copies. And if Epic comes along and says, we're going to guarantee that by buying them ourselves, then that is extremely, uh, uh, enticing for some developers. And I'm just disappointed that Clay went that route. I'm a huge Clay fan. You guys know this. Um, and I, I just, I, you know, they're, their reasoning for it, it's pretty fucking flimsy, in my opinion, given their history, uh, what they've said in the past. But you know what? Their business, I guess they're going to do what they want to do. I'm just not going to buy the new game. Easy. Wow. See how easy that is? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. DE takes their sweet time. Let me see. Uh, uh, game companies that won't, uh, that won't just say, tell the truth, uh, only show how little we matter to them. We wanted the money. Just say, yeah, just fucking say they offered us a deal that we couldn't refuse. And it's because like, uh, otherwise we're speculating that you're greedy. And if we speculate that you're greedy, we're probably saying you're greedy. <laughs> like if you just say, Hey, you know what? We're just trying to stay afloat and things are kind of rough lately. And this looks like a good deal. I would not be mad. I would, it would, I, you know, I'd say, you know, it sucks that you don't have confidence in your game. That would that would, it would actually make these sales, but I'm not running the business end. 
and you guys probably projecting that you're not going to make as many sales as you uh, as you would expect from a, from a, from this title. So you guarantee it by going to Epic Games Store. I wouldn't be mad if they said it like that. I just wouldn't. It sucks. But if if but it's seriously, if this is Clay's way of just staying afloat, then I understand. If this is just them saying, oh, you know, we just want some extra money instead of leaving it open on the platform so that anybody could play the game, then that to me is greed. So yeah, uh, you probably just be gifted the game by someone else. Oh wait, Epic does not support gifts. That's right. Uh, if Epic were a better platform, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. That has always been my biggest thing. And I know that's going to get lost, but it's always my biggest thing. I only have beef with Epic because the platform sucks and the business practices. If one of those two things change, I would change, right? The platform sucks. It still sucks. Um, and the uh, and they also dished UT. Yeah, that actually cut a little bit of salt in there for sure. <laughs> uh, but the business practices, I don't appreciate that they're taking all these games, they're buying them up to make them exclusive on the shitty platform. If the platform didn't suck, I wouldn't care uh, as much. Uh, if the um, if they stop these like absurd business practices, then you know what? I could deal with a shitty platform. It's fine. Steam used to be shitty too. Desura was shitty. We still made it work. We still played. We still played those games. Um, Epic's not competing on features on the quality platform itself. They're competing on their infinite money pools. That's true. That's true. Dark. Hey, Dark. What up, dude? Uh, the platform sucks. They have bad business practices and the security is a nightmare. No thanks. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, like, I haven't used the Epic Game Store pla uh, 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 store in a while. Uh, Epic Game Store store. Um, but yeah, I feel like every other time I used to log in, and this is like some months ago that uh, uh, I was locked out because somebody was trying to get into my account. I don't know why. What uh, they, I have I have Unreal Tournament on there. And that's fucking free. I guess I thought I had Fortnite or some shit like that. It's one of you guys trying to hack my shit, thinking I'm like some kind of secret Fortnite player or something like that. Uh, so, E3 did happen this week, though. <laughs> they wanted my Fortnite bucks. That's what they wanted. E3 did happen this week. And the biggest news from E3, I think uh, we all know what it is. We all know what it is. <sighs> <laughs> okay, but let me tell you. The feeling of, of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. Okay, Man. Let me tell you. The feeling just, I mean, like, you just can't not like Keanu Reeves, except for Eric, because Eric's a dick. But, really man. Just, just, just stole the show with his little, look at his little, like, his little leg, kind of, little pigeon toe when he kind of steps back and was, like, trips on it. He's so, it's, it just feels like, <laughs> man of the people, I know, I know. There's really not too many bad things you could say about Keanu Reeves, um, unless, unless, unless you're, you're just a mean person and you just don't like nice people. Uh, even his co-commercial 25 years ago is great. You can never go out wrong with Keanu. And I thought that was such a fucking smart choice because everybody loves Keanu Reeves right now. And so for them to pick up Keanu as, as a major character, they've already said that in, uh, in, in Cyberpunk 2077, that um, Keanu Reeves' character is gonna have the second most voice lines to the, uh, uh, to the primary uh, uh, protagonist. So that's a big deal. That it's not just that they used him for, you know, for, for this uh, promo. It's that, yeah, he's your buddy for like 90% of the game. Who doesn't want to be Keanu Reeves' buddy? <laughs> Although I will say, though, like, you know, we're, we're so used to him, you know, we're so used to this, that, uh, especially now, um, that you probably have a certain expectation for who's, who he's going to be in the movie. Um, if you've watched Keanu in... Any of his like non mainstream movies, like Neon Demon, for example, he doesn't have a major role in Neon Demon, but he does have a role where you get to see him play a different uh, kind of character. He's like he he's kind of like a uh, kind of a like a trap like a white trash uh, a motel landlord, and uh, the game's called Neon Neon Demon, by the way. Okay, the game the the movie's called Neon Demon. Uh, if you want to check it out, he's not really yeah, it's a sleazeball, totally sleazeball, uh, total creeper. So. So he's he's dynamic enough. I mean, despite like for the mo most of his roles, he kind of comes off like a plank. Um, but he does have some dynamic there that just doesn't get explored a lot of times because he's an action star. He really is an action star. Um, so did the guy who yelled your breath take and get a collector's edition of the cyberpunk for the devs? Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. 
I think that's great, actually, because this, I'm sure the Cyberpunk guys really appreciate it. You know why? Because it's fucking clip lyrics clip. It's not it's not even like from the official stream lyrics clip of this has eight hundred and thirty nine thousand fucking views. So I'm sure that that they're just like, oh, yeah, we'll hook you up with a fucking free collector's edition copy of Cyberpunk. And no problem. Uh, he turned it down and suggested they donate to charity instead. I don't know if that's true, but you know what? That's a great, that's a great end to that story. In other news, also in E3, we had, uh, we had some like master level trolling going on from, uh, 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 oh, I get his name right. Uh, Goichi Suda, who is, uh, uh, one of the creators of No More Heroes. Um, now he is, he's being translated, uh, uh on stage. While he's discussing the best way to play the game. And well, how about we just watch the clip? <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, totally. Uh, you will be able to play the game just, you know, standardly with uh, you know the Joy Cons attached to the uh, the main console itself. Uh, that's totally playable. But uh, I guess you could say like the true way to play the game, the most pure way would be to detach the Joy Cons. And uh, get as much of this action yeah. as possible. Oh yeah, so no, that's that was, that's definitely the way to play the game. That was one of my favorite things about playing the the previous <laughs> games was how I would charge up yeah, my yeah. sword because I was really good well, at it. You don't discuss it. You don't think you have to play this more? Oh, I remember yeah, 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 that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, totally. Uh, I watched this clip so you know, many times. I watched this clip so many times. Look at his fucking face. Uh, that's totally Look at his but, face, uh, man. I guess you say, like, he fucking knows. Of course he knows. Be, uh, detach the Joy Cons and uh, get as much of this action yeah. as possible. Oh, yeah. So no, that's, no, that's no. definitely the way to play the game. No, and then all of them. Was about playing the, the, <laughs> the last game was how I would charge up yeah. my sword. I was really good well, at it. Yeah. <laughs> just for like that last second there, or like that last like two frames of them just. Just all like getting it. Look at his face as he looks at the camera right here. Like he fucking knows, man. And he just he just couldn't just couldn't resist. Oh man, uh, it's so good. It's yeah, it's so good. Just just probably <laughs> probably one of my favorite clips from E3. Uh, and there's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. Uh, the guy left goes to to cup the balls with his other hand. Does he? Hold on a second. Hold on. A second. Let me let me let me let me. <laughs> He, he kind of does. He kind of does. Yeah, he does. He's, there you go. That's where you gotta do it. No oh, man. Oh man. No, that's um. Doesn't suit. I think he does. I think he does speak English. Uh, but he knows he can get away with this shit. Going through a translator. <laughs> Don't have to say everything I say. I just gotta look serious while doing it. Uh, just, just great. Now there are other clips that have also been uh pretty substantial in terms of uh uh impact overall. But I can't show uh those clips. So we'll just talk about it. Dr. Disrespect, in the, seen in this picture here, labeled as top 10 pictures taken before disasters. Dr. Disrespect had his very first, his very first live I, IRL live stream uh, at E3. And there are a number of, uh, of, of funny moments. But the best one was, for some reason, <laughs> Dr. Disrespect Privacy Laws, yes. <laughs> for some reason, he went into the bathroom, which that's not that's not the, the questionable thing. I understand why people sometimes need to go and use the restroom. Um, but the cameraman followed him in. And, you know, I understand when you're when you're trying to run a show, when you're trying to run a show, sometimes, sometimes things can get away from you. Sometimes you're just, you're just... You, you, you're just so focused on something, you forget to change the camera, you forget to talk about a thing that you want to talk about before the show because your mind's on all sorts of places and everything. Um, but but walking into a bathroom with a camera, I feel like that would trigger all kinds of riff. No matter what character I'm in, I feel like deep down inside, I know that the 30,000 or 80,000 people or however many thousands of people are watching probably shouldn't be exposed to somebody else's dick when they turn around and try to zip their shit up. Like, I just feel like in the bathroom, there's a, there's a sanctity to it that you don't necessarily just like, oh yeah, just go and come in the bathroom. Uh, he did it not just once, not twice, not three times. He did it four times. Now, I didn't see, but, I, but what I've heard is that it was four times that he did this. 
I don't understand how that mistake is made, but he did finally come back and say that he, um, that he has fired Alex, I guess his director. Uh, even DJ Wee had posted that, um, that it makes sense. It makes sense to have a producer that follows you around with their best intention, with your best intentions in mind. Here's a question I've been posing the whole time. Why did the cameraman walk in? Uh, where on, uh, on Gaia's plentiful green bosom does walking into a bath? I know exactly. It doesn't matter like what fucking planet you're on with whatever character you're presenting. That should still be embedded in there. And so, yes, and Twitch did not ban him until the end of the stream. That's correct. Uh, he did actually lose uh, his streaming privileges and his account is currently down. We don't know how long it's for. Uh, Doc was pretty silent for, I think, pretty much the rest of that day. And it wasn't until the next day that he... Um, or maybe the day after, where he came back and said that mistakes were made and blase, blase, blase. So here's his first IRL stream already, uh, and it's very quickly uh, that he says, Mis mis mishaps lead to recaps, full vid coming soon. P.S. My director, Alex, was fired. And it goes further. He has also been, as is mentioned in chat here, uh, according to, oops, wrong link. We're going to try that again. Mm, boop. There we go. A representative of E3 Expo has told Kotaku that it has revoked Dr. Disrespect's badge after a stunt in which he live streamed from a public bathroom inside the show. Just that fucking tweet itself. Just like, really? How did how did he fuck this up? How did he fuck? Every time he leaves the house, he fucks something up and it's caught on camera or or we all find out about it somehow. It's it's seriously it's it's some serious like. Self, what is it like? It's just it's it's self-inflicted paparazziism, and that's what it is. It's just he he's he's it was auto auto paparazziism. Could we call it this? Where he just he exposes himself <laughs> uh, <laughs> every time he fucking leaves, and he gets in trouble for it. <sighs> Twitch needs to stop uh, endorsing this crap. He is constantly intentionally pushing everything as far as he can, and then trying to claim, oops. Uh, lack of self-awareness because it's him and he makes Twitch money and it'll slap on the wrist. Yes. So, so we already know that it's not a 24 hour ban. We already know that it's not a three day ban. The only thing that's left is like a seven and a 30. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever heard of a two week ban, but, uh, usually I hear like, you know, it's, it's like the one, was it one, three, seven and, and 30 and then perma. I could, it's not a perma ban. There is no way it's a perma ban. If it's a perma ban, okay. If it's a perma, pff, all right. If it's a perma ban, let's just like hypothetically talk about this for a second. If if doc if Doctor Disrespect gets perma banned for this, uh, somebody at Twitch will get fired for this, like legit, because Doctor Disrespect is a massive money maker for Twitch, massive money maker for Twitch. So there is no way. I'm certain that right now, Mixer and YouTube are both just beating down his door with offers to just come over and stream whatever you want outside of this because this is illegal uh, <laughs> to do. It's filming inside a bathroom is easily illegal, no matter what. Um, this is kind of a slam dunk for a permanent ban based on L um, TOS. If it was anybody else, yes, but it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. There also is a possibility to being set for court for this. Yes, there is. So that's that's the thing that could, uh, like, if there are any charges filed by anybody in that room, then yeah, there's there's a potential this this ban could go for longer than thirty days. But you remember how big of a return he had? It was like hundreds of thousands of people watched Doctor Disrespect come back after the whole the whole uh, floozy incident. <laughs> whatever we want to call it. Uh, and it was a huge deal. And he was bigger than, bigger than ever after that whole thing. It's going to happen again. Twitch already has a shady image to the general masses about stuff they don't show and any honest care about. Uh, all they continue doing is ruining their own image. Uh, this is going back to those bullshit lies which keeps spewing about accountability, transparency, fair use, application of the rules. Yeah, it's, I mean, Twitch is a business. They have to look at this like, okay, he did something fucked up. Are, are, are there any long-standing suits that are going to be filed for this? No? Okay. Maybe it won't happen again. And that's it. So it's, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to happen. 
from a again from a business perspective, it would be it would be silly of Twitch to perma ban him based on this. But I mean, I could see I could see a thirty day ban. I mean, doesn't Doc somehow find a way to take a month off every month every year? Isn't that kind of his thing? It's maybe you need a month off. Um, I wonder if this was staged in an attempt to get the major comeback. Yeah, last time <laughs> it was. Just, I know it, it's. He did go in four times. Yeah, yeah. Like Mad Russian says, four times. Same reason why game companies like Riot don't ban their most popular streams, even though they're toxic pieces of shit. Yep. Uh, it's just it's 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 business. It, it's it, it, they want it on one hand. They want it. They want to maintain that they're fair and we should be held accountable and everything. And they they truly do. I'm certain that they truly do, unless it applies to a certain I don't know a certain echelon of streamer client whatever. Um, <clears throat> you talk about needing a break about a week before this. <laughs> there we go. Uh, if it was once, I'd be okay with the slap of the wrist. Should be more, but I would be accepting of uh, you fucked up. Do it again, but four times. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing, though. It's it's the same. It's it's it is the same infraction four times. If he doesn't know that it's a bad idea to go in the first time, then then he's gonna go through. Then he's gonna go in fifty times. Does that mean that we sh that he should be charged fifty times? And I I, I don't realize. No, don't, 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 I should say charge because then you think about it, like legally. Yes, you commit the same crime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but no, in terms of like a toss violation, it all happened in the same stream. He made the same mistake several times. At no point during the stream did somebody tell him, hey, don't fucking do that. And then he went and did it. Right. So that's that's the thing. It's like there was no opportunity there to correct this course of action. Therefore, it really just kind of counts as one infraction, despite him going in four times. Like I said, you don't know the first time you're going to do it 10 times. Um, intent matters. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's the other thing, too. Intent does matter. He didn't go, he went in there just because it was part of his show and he just fucking was going to go in there and like, look at him and make like fucking like bathroom jokes or whatever where he's peeking over the top, right? Like he went in there for some cheap jokes. He was thinking, he was thinking about the cheap laughs. He wasn't thinking about, uh, uh, uh about the, le the legality of going in there. Uh, I'm sure chat was telling him it was a bad idea. He wasn't reading chat though. Yeah, that's the thing. He wasn't reading chat. And this this may this may actually like go back or cycle back around to when he said that he fired his director Alex. Um, now you know we don't know like we don't know what the what the business side of Doctor Disrespect looks like, right? So we don't know if I fired Alex means that he fired Alex, <laughs> or is that just Doctor Disrespect saying you know oh yeah I fired the guy who who, who made me look bad, right? Like that's that's thing we don't really fucking know. Uh, he also walked into the bathroom the first time and yelled bodyguards, uh, which I feel is supposed to be a code word for security or his production team. Be alert and fix a problem in the works. Oh. Uh, the judge could see it as four counts of violation of privacy. See, that's why I said I shouldn't set charge. Um, but also, yeah, the context, matter, the context of his intent matters, like you said. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, I, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. It's like, he went in four times, but like I said, there was no, the intent was not malicious. Uh, Unless he really wanted a vacation that badly. I don't know if I don't know. Guns! Sorry to hear about the news, bud. But, thank you so much. Let me know if you need help with anything, by the way. Um, oh, somebody said his statute in California that he violated his maximum punishment of $10,000 fine in five years. Wow! Jeez. He violated his maximum punishment of $10,000. Well, also a minimum of nothing. So, so I guess, I guess... We'll just have to wait and see. But we should actually throw some guesses out there. Like, what do you guys think? You think you think seven day ban, 30 day ban, or it's not gonna be perma. So let's just say seven day, 30 day, or longer. What do you guys think? You think less than seven? Well, we're getting pretty close to less than seven next Tuesday. Uh seven to fourteen, seven day at a guess, seven, thirty, probably thirty day ban. He broke state laws. That's a good point. 30 cuts, elite cuts, uh, the, the legality of it, 14 day ban. All right, 44 days. Bad Russian's going on this. I have to remember this. Uh, I think waiting to see if charges get filed, which is why I think 30 days would probably make sense. People I follow are saying it was a seven. Don't know if they had inside info or not. When it comes to money, people look past a lot of things. If he gets 30 days, he might switch to Mixer or YouTube and use that time uh, as for a holiday trip. <clears throat> yep. Uh, the PewDiePie stream, <laughs> D Live. That's right, D Live. 
45 still. <laughs> Uh, perma, because I want to believe Twitch isn't bad at being good people. They are, though. Again, intent. I understand that people have their thoughts about Dr. Disrespect for a variety of reasons, but I do not think that he went in the bathroom with the intent to stream somebody taking a piss. Which sounds really dumb when you say it out loud. Moving on! <laughs> it's, just, it's like, how do you fuck that up? Moving on, we had a really interesting uh, keynote, a really interesting um, uh, AMA with Elon Musk. Elon Musk was uh, was on stage taking questions with, uh, I have Tom Howard for some reason. Well, that's a weird, with Todd Howard, executive producer for Bethesda. You guys know what Todd Howard is, right? So uh, Todd Howard and Elon Musk for some reason, um, we're on stage doing an AMA and Andy Milnakis shows up with a question for them. Hold on, I have no sound because I'm muted. A couple audience Q&A, a little AMA here. If uh, you want to raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you and we can have a couple uh, questions for these guys. This is a rare opportunity. Hello, how are you Hi. doing? Good. We're you. streaming on Twitch right now, by the way. Uh, Shout out to Twitch. Right. Hello. I had a question about the possibility of living in a simulation. When you think about like all the quirks, every individual personality, how things work on a cellular level, like the universe, everything, doesn't it start to seem more far-fetched when you see how intricate and individual things are? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well. I talked a bit about that, the idea that... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he, asked, he asked about us living in a simulation. Uh, I don't know if I have to explain that, that, that part of the joke. I hope not, but <clears throat> the answer is 42. Uh, just overall, a really strange... Uh, uh, group to be on stage talking about video games um, or in a video game uh, related uh, convention uh, and then just to pile on top of fucking Andy Milakis like asking that fucking question just just <sighs> and then just dumbfounding all of them um, the entire the entire loaded question the entire uh, segment where they are discussing this the, the link's going to be in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube um but it it is kind of strange. It it does feel a little bit like it feels a little bit like Todd Howard is just like a big fan of Elon Musk and somehow managed to finagle his way up on on stage with him. Uh, because even in the introductions, they talk about, "Oh, are you guys friends?" And he's like, "Well, I bought a Tesla," which is it just around a, pretty much what he said. And it's just like, you know, I bought a Ford. But I don't know anyone. That, I don't, I don't I say I'm friends with anybody at the Ford company or even the dealership. It just, it just, it just, it just does. It just felt like it was just a strange uh, uh, group of folks up there having a discussion. Jeff Keighley, uh, Elon Musk, and um, and Todd Howard. But <clears throat> yeah, I know Elon. I know. I know. I know Elon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're putting fault. Yes, yes. So we're getting there, Quick Beam. We're getting there. So they did mention. They did mention that. Uh, they're going to have, it says right here, it says, it says right here, I have a weird chat. Oh my God, GameSpot. Jesus Christ. Fucking pop-ups. Just stop. Um, it does say that they have a weird, ch Jesus fucking Christ. Block. Don't worry, they're going to be disappearing sometime in the next five years, I'm certain. Um, them and their their namesake uh, as well. So, uh, Tesla is getting a functioning version of Fallout Shelter. That's the, uh, that that maybe that's the reason why they're together on stage. Uh, Tesla is on. You're probably like, what the fuck? Tesla is also getting Cuphead. But I don't see the Cuphead developers up there on stage with with uh, with Elon Musk, Elon Musk talking about how they're buddies and shit. I don't see that happening. Uh, but yeah, so so they are... I mean, Tesla Tesla OS or whatever, which is basically Android uh, derivative, if I, from, if I recall. Um, they already have a number of games that work. On, uh, on on it, they have like asteroids and shit like that, and so they're starting to push it where you can actually play 
um, more games in your car. It's it's you know it's it's just it's not even like a thing, right? It's just for the lulls, really. I mean, I have the article here for uh, um, <clears throat> for Cuphead. You know, like, like I said, they're just doing it for just 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 for the headlines. Get Cuphead, get get Cuphead on your fucking on your on your Tesla. It's the only time you're going to really come in handy is when you show it to your friends. Like, dude, look, I can put a fucking Cuphead on my Tesla. In my Tesla. <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't know what the battery impact of that would be to run in Cuphead or or uh, a Fallout Shelter or anything else on your um <laughs> your Tesla iOS. Yeah, but you technically don't have to be parked in order to play it. So auto drive enabled. Yeah, that's true. And the pitch was with Fallout Shelter was that they uh it's like oh yeah this is a shelter that's basically your car so your car is actually the shelter where these all these uh, uh inhabitants all these uh um vault dwellers are going to be living in your car weird just weird elon just does this for the hell of it he's basically one of us with money yeah I'll, i i believe that totally again like this, this this shows it like what other dealers out there just like yeah just make games work on our uh uh, on, on our center console, our entertainment center. Fucking no one. <laughs> like, no one's doing that. He's just doing it. Just, just because it's like, yeah, you know, just, just look and see what happens. I mean, look at his, look at his face. I appreciate it. Let me see. Uh, okay, get, get so a good, having that. Uh, whatever, I don't want to hear this guy talk. All right, so. Yeah, no surprise there. Uh, it takes a brave person to run a Bethesda game at the same time as autopilot. <laughs> Damn. That, Jesus. That's... That could almost be the title of the fucking the show today, man. <laughs> it takes a brave person to run Bethesda game the same as I am as autopilot. Jesus. Um, <laughs> Gaz, thank you, Gaz. Uh, let's see. So, that's pretty much the majority of the E3 stuff. There is a number of games that were announced. There's a lot. There's a lot of info being uh, being uh, uh, disseminated because it's after E3 now, technically. So the news is all over the place. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, I think, pretty much stole the show. Um, Doom Eternal had one of the coolest murals. Uh, I, I'll actually pull that up right now. Doom Eternal E3 mural. It was just absolutely just massive. Um, here we go. Is this it? No, that's not the, un that's the unfinished version. No, 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 no. Everybody has unfinished version. Here we go. So yeah, this is the. I'll go and go down here so you can see it. A massive three pane mural with no no uh uh Mr. Skeletal no dude. I felt like with all this room, like Twitch even like photoshopped one in for a fucking meme for for a tweet. And, I, and for a moment, I was watching my phone, I was like, oh my god, did they do that? And I looked, I was like, oh, they didn't, because there's so much room, they could have squeezed it in, and it would have been great. But this is, like, one of the one of the coolest parts of um, of going to E3 is seeing, like, these massive building-sized murals, just, just fucking huge. Uh... And it's everywhere, everywhere around, around, uh, the, the, um, the convention center is just painted in all these different things. It's fucking awesome. I mean, just in general, they typically have like huge building size things for like movies or whatever. But to see something like Doom Eternal up there, that's pretty, that's pretty slick. Call of Duty did it as well. Um, of course they did it. Gears of War, I remember Gears of War had one as well. How expensive is that to print off in an inkjet? <laughs> a lot. It's a lot of inkjet refills, buddy. Um, and then it was washed away and removed in a day. Oh, well, they've got to get it up there just for uh, for the picture. And then that's it. Breath of the Wild 2 was even bigger than Cyberpunk this year for you. Uh, we've known about Cyberpunk for a long time. Breath of, Breath of the Wild 2 is hyper material. It's hype material. Um, they, we didn't get a whole lot for Breath of the Wild 2. But what I did catch, was there's a, there, I guess there was a, a number of people that were complaining that that's using the same engine. But what I really think happened was that nobody was complaining about it, but somebody felt the need to point out that that was an issue and that people were complaining about it. Because that's the way things work. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, same Breath of the Wild 2 is like three years off, probably. Probably. I uh, wasn't a fan of Breath of the Wild 1. 2 isn't going to get me to spend any money on it. Mm, the fucking castle wakes up and is one of the guardians. Boy! Yeah, so we got a little tiny teaser. For the next one. My bigger hype for Cyberpunk wasn't the Keanu announcement, but the 48 minute gameplay walkthrough I found right after. The game looks solid. It does look good. The gameplay video, I didn't watch the entire thing, but it does look interesting. Um, it's tough It's tough to really make a judgment call even off of like gameplay, but 48 minutes is a long time. 
at the very least you could get an idea of how the uh uh just like the general theme and graphics and shit how many polygons are in your game i don't know if anybody gets that reference but <clears throat> apparently era hates everything but ho hopping between jobs and ligma no ah, damn kittens oh this man had a family he doesn't but dang uh hordes the games caught my eye was minecraft dungeons yes minecraft dungeons actually does look pretty good to me as well um it just yeah it's diablo with with minecraft skin and it looks good it looks good they also announced a terrible commander keen mobile game terrible looking battletoads game oh I, okay i have to disagree i had to disagree with the um with the notion that the new battletoads game is does not look good i feel like the old battletoads style is dated I thought the new one makes a lot of sense. The new one feels like the new DuckTales, and I like the new DuckTales. I also like the old DuckTales. I think it's possible to like both. Um, and I feel like Battletoads, the new Battletoads could be pretty amazing. Okay, I, it looks like it'll be a fun game. Uh, but, oh yeah, Dragon Quest Eleven for Switch. Uh, Watch Dogs 3, the Watch Dogs 3 Legion demo was phenomenal. It really was. Helen, come on, man. Like, that whole thing was was fantastic. It was really, the whole concept of having permadeath and having recruits and everything just makes sense. I actually wonder, because throughout the entire time, you're talking to, like, a central, uh, uh, you know, an AI to basically coordinate things, right? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, I wonder how much of this, how, how much scripting is involved because they were just looking at random people, right? And it was like, it looked like, oh, you just look at anybody. And then the person, the, the voice would just give you info on that, whatever. But that's a lot of voice being scripted. Um, the voices are changed with the modulation. They address that. I, I don't know. I don't, wait, are you answering a question that I, that I asked? Uh, the thing I'm wondering is, honestly, how many individual characters were actually are? Yes, that's what I'm asking. Is that how many, how many uh, actual scripted interactions it, you're capable of, hap uh, of having that are unique. Because I think actually specifically with Watch Dogs, when the first one released, there was some controversy surrounding it because the demo was made, made uh, like the nighttime with the rain and all that shit, made it feel so much more vast and just, just so much more depth than the actual release gave us. And as is with most E3 demonstrations, um, you have to kind of temper your expectations. I wonder if you look at a person and then the game spins a wheel or something and stuff uh, slots into a place for that person, right? Yeah, like the picture is easy. Just take the bot, the take the the um, the model and just make a character portrait, and then just assign. Okay, we haven't used this character yet. Throw it in there. So that okay. So that also means then if if somebody finds a Buford in there, I don't know where I got the name. Uh, Buford in their uh, 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 version of the game, and then somebody else finds Buford somewhere else. Is that Buford going to be just in name and everything else is that is exactly where I got it from. God damn. Um, damn. Does that mean that Buford's going to have the same voice, the same face, the same uh, everything? Or is it just a series of things that just get pulled? It's like, okay, we got a per we got a character right here. Okay, let's grab it. It's a female character. We're going to grab this voice. We're going to grab this. You know, it's, it's an elderly character. Character is a young character. Okay, we have like. We have Helen and we have like all these other like, you know, elderly female characters. Okay, so we're gonna grab from, from this stack and we'll throw that in there. So that's that's the stuff that I'm genuinely curious about. Uh, the character traits are randomly generated when you scan the character that you basically want to know how many origin quests there are. So again, Saren, the question is how many unique pre-recorded scripts for the characters exist? So that question, I'm guessing, has probably not been answered yet. Um, and so, yeah, so they're treating the audio as being like... A Discord chat with lots of people chipping into conversations. Not sure how it handles names. During the announcement, I was already feeling like it was going to be hit, but hit by the same crap No Man's Sky did a release. People are expecting the universe because the devs claimed it, but there are only like nine. Mm. Uh, what about the inner character references? One referencing another died. Yeah. There's probably like 10 unique voices as they change the look. Someone will spend lots of time finding out all of that. Someone will definitely spend lots of time finding all of that. We should also not forget that there is a sound, like, like voice font capability. Um, that people have been using, uh, kind of like deep fakes, but for voice. Um, and that has actually been pretty successful in the few instances that I've actually seen it being used, where it actually mimics somebody else's voice. So that's, that technology is not being used in, in, um, in the new Watch Dogs. 
But that technology is something we should all keep an eye out for, not just for your political uh, needs, but also because of uh, because that would be a game changer for video games. Now, all of a sudden, you don't have to record all these voices. You just make a couple voice fonts and then write the script. And that's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, Google Assistant. Yeah. So moving on, Xbox Game Pass. I know you guys are all genuinely curious about this. Uh, I went ahead and I pulled up the site here so you could see. Oops, I hit a button there. I did not. Okay, good. Um, so there are 108 games currently available for the Xbox Game Pass for PC. These are the, This is the PC list. If you're curious how much it costs, here it is. $4.99 a month, beta price, join for $1. Regular price, $9.99 per month. If you don't have an Xbox One, then that is what you're going to be going for right there. There you go. You get access to a ton of games that they're, that they are, what I've read is that they're actually working with like GOG, which they just recently acquired, uh, Microsoft, um, to make it so that the games available as part of this service will be available on other platforms. That's what they're pushing for. Um, so we'll see. But as of right now, you could download the Xbox app and actually sign up for the Xbox um, uh, uh, game service and get access to a ton of games. Just just like just on the first page here, uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at this like, OK, if I were to spend $9.99 on this right now for the first month, just on the first page, would I have a number of games that I feel like would be worth my time, like $10? Moonlighter, I would play that. Astroneer, probably play that. SteamWorld Dig 2, I've already played that throughout the all the way through. Sea of Thieves. See if these is a game I've been wanting to get back into. I don't own it anymore. Uh, Forza Horizon 4. Wait, is this right? Hold on a second. It was speculated that Forza, Forza Horizon 4 was actually not going to be on this list, but it is. Um, so already there's like a number of games on here that's like, okay, this is, uh, these are games that I would, I would totally play. Wolfenstein 2, I've not played this yet. I, this would be probably perfect. Um, let me see. No, 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 not not Disneyland. There we go. Bro Force. There's obviously some smaller games on here that's probably not worth your time, but as a whole, as a hundred games, and they're gonna be adding more. Yeah, yeah. It says you get Horizon Four. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So that um, that already for some folks is that's totally worth it. I mean, you could you could put so much time into Forza Horizon Four. Like, I mean, just ask kittens and guns. Like, this just it's just endless. Endless amount of hours you can log into that. Metro Exodus is on there. Funny enough. Um, Hydro Thunder is on there. All right. Hollow Knight. So there are a number, Slate Aspire, there are a number of games on here that already, like, I feel make that $10 worth it. So just over time, is it going to be, is going to be value for you? Or you get your money's worth uh, through here. Uh, after you go through the 100 games that are here, what's at the very end of the list? Outer Worlds. Oh, shit. That's not, that's not, is that, oh, this is not the, is it the new one? Hold on. They're doing a, re let's see, uh, Outer Worlds, uh, October 24, 2019. Okay, so that's coming. If you have the Ultimate Edition of the Xbox Game Pass, you get access to releases on all platforms four days before retail. So just keep that in mind. Um... Yeah, it's a, it is. It's a lot. It's a lot of really good games. Like I said, that's why I wanted to pull up the actual list and go through it with you guys because it's very easy to say I'm not going to pay ten dollars for a bunch of games I already played. And then you look at it and you're like, you know what? There's actually a lot of games on here that I have actually not played yet that I might be interested in checking out. And the ten dollars a month, like, that kind of makes sense. I mean, I, I mean, stealth. I don't know how Stealth Incorporated Two is, but Stealth Inc. One, I, I loved Stealth Inc. One. Um, Hollow Miami into the breach, Void Bastards. We just fucking played Void Bastards two weeks ago. We love the game. Uh, Cross Code. I mean, like, it's yeah. There's a lot of good games on here, guys. So it's it's for ten dollars. This seems like and, and it's also a sign up deal for like four ninety nine. Um, it 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 sounds like it sounds like a deal to me. Question is, in a year's time, will spending one hundred twenty dollars on uh you know on, on a service would that still have value to you? I think so. I think as long as they keep adding to it. Uh, I mean, some of these games have, st they're so long. They're so, Valkyria Chronicles, right fucking here. This is like a fucking 40 hour game. Okay, so 
you're going to get your money's worth if you want to play the games that are available on here. And like I said, there's t tons of games there available for you to go and check out. Woo! I might actually sign up for that shit like tonight. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I wish I had a referral link. So I'm going to fucking sell to you guys too. Um, I prefer actually owning my game so I wouldn't care for this on console. But since I don't own one. Yeah, I don't own a one. Uh, I feel like I have plenty of games. But there's other games I want to check out that I don't necessarily want to pay for. So, mm. uh, it's going to get a tipping point where Steam is where your old collection is, and you get all new games through Xbox Game Pass to tell. That, yeah, actually, Waylander, that's, so that's a really good, uh, perspective to have here, is that you look at, you look at, the, this is like Netflix. I'm sure all of us have, like, a collection of, of DVDs and Blu-rays, and they're, you know, uh, down by the TV, right? And the reason why we don't go out of our way to buy those is because we can just watch a show on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever. And these are all services that you pay for uh, annually or monthly. And that's the... Uh, did everyone, anyone ever use Gamefly? Yeah, Gamefly. I, I, did, I think I did once, once or twice. Um, I used to treat Humble Monthly as as that. Yeah, so, I mean, people are people are okay with this. Like, it may seem foreign to some folks. Raise heart, thank you very much for that year, by the way. Um, it may seem foreign to some folks, but... I feel like once you get used to it, I guess it's just kind of the way it is. If you don't own your games, oh, that's a tough one. At some point, you have so many games, it's like you'll never play through all of them. So what does it matter if you own them all, right? That's... And the ones that you really like, the ones that you really, really like, you could just buy for like probably pennies on the dollar. Like, think about that, actually. You can pay $9.99 and treat it as a demo service. You could just download and play whatever game you want. And then if you come across a game that you really, really like, and you think, you know what? I want to own this game forever. You could buy it on Steam, which kind of defeats the purpose of owning it forever, but whatever. Um, you could buy it somewhere else on another platform if you want to. Uh, let's face it. This has been developed by porn sites 20 years ago. Porn is always leading the way in this regard. You watch the video and then you're like, oh, huh. I could go to the site, pay, pay a monthly fee. Um, yeah, I mean, that, sure, porn, Netflix, whatever, uh, the same people complaining about subscription games are the same people who said that WoW wouldn't last because you had to pay for it monthly, Blizzard's Mountain of Cash disagrees with that assertion, I did the ultimate one because I was paying for monthly for Xbox Live, so instead of $10 for Xbox Live, we get hundreds of games for only $5 more, there you go, um, spending $120 a year on Steam for games you hardly touch, if ever at all, or $120 a year on a Game Pass we hardly use, which is better, exactly, so it's, it's again, it's it's gonna be something that some of us are gonna have to wrap our head around because it's just you're so used to just you know what I like this game, I'm gonna wait for it to come on sale, I'm gonna buy it. So what happens to the video game industry when people no longer want to buy games and they just want to wait for it to come out on whatever service they're signed up to? Where do we go from there? Are we going to get to the point to where people are going to look at, oh, I got to buy that game? I'm not going to buy it. I'll just wait for it to come out on whatever subscription service. And think about this happened with the music, with music service. Like music sales have, music sales have dipped. Music stream revenue has obviously climbed. Are those two things like offset? Do they offset each other perfectly? Probably not. Uh, except you don't own games on Steam. Technically not. Yeah, that's why I made the joke. Uh, I buy stuff on Steam sale 80% off and never play. The value is actually $0 even though I got it on sale. Got to play it to get the value. Uh, every developer will have a subscription. Ubisoft is launching theirs this fall. Yeah. No, it's true. It's going to happen. Origin is already there. Um, Microsoft is going to be next. Who else is there? No, somebody else is there too. Um, I know Ubisoft announced theirs. I want to say... Is it GOG? Oh, well, yeah, PlayStation Now, right? PlayStation Now? I think it's PlayStation Now, right? Don't they offer... I, I forget. Uh, Origin, I already mentioned Origin. Um, so, Humble, Humble. There you go, thank you, Humble. Humble, I currently, currently running ones. Um, so, yeah, Ubisoft's coming soon. It's gonna happen. Eventually, eventually, we're never gonna buy games. We're just gonna basically pay $40 a month and just have access to, like, all the games. That's going to change a lot of shit, guys. That's going to change a lot of stuff. I mean, first of all, part of the reason why it's very difficult to get started as a content creator, whether it be on YouTube or Twitch, is getting over that, oh my god, I gotta buy this game. 
I got to buy this game, spend $60 on it and hope that I get the views that I'm looking for. Uh, and then if I don't, if the views suck, I'll stop playing it tomorrow. Even if I like the game, I have to, for the health of the channel, I have to sacrifice and not play it again. This is a real struggle for a lot of content creators. If all of a sudden you're spending just a flat amount every month and every and, and you have access to all the games, including some four days ahead of time, then, I mean, that's a massive hurdle that you're now able to, to just, oh, you know what? This game fucking sucks. Hey, no problem. No problem, guys. We'll just fucking play something else. And it's not going to cost you anything extra. Uh, I don't want a bunch of monthly subs. Personally, I also don't play enough games to justify it. Well, there you go. Um, we both know a guy that has that problem that right now. I know a bunch of guys that have that problem right now. I know this fucking hard. Uh, I deal with it. I know you guys deal with it. I know a lot of you guys are in here that, uh, that, that, uh, are trying to stream and it's fucking hard. It's expensive. <laughs> it's fucking expensive. So I, I think, I think it's a welcome thing. Yeah, we won't own our games, but re realistically, the only games I really give a shit about owning them, owning are like games I grew up with. You know, and a handful of games that pop up every once in a while. It's like, yeah, I have to own that game. I own Fez on a number of platforms. Uh, and even though I've never completed the game, I felt like that game had such an impact. I was, I, I just own it. Like, I had to buy it. Um, almost, and Don't Starve, same thing. Same fucking thing, Don't Starve. And when Space Engineers comes out on another platform, even if it's on fucking Xbox, and I don't have an Xbox, I'll fucking buy it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably won't do, but but still, you guys get my point. Um, being a variety streamer without industry context is impossible, to be honest. You make less than you spend trying to keep up. This is why a service like this would be beneficial. It also means that the um, that the variety streamer industry is going to be blowing up, which means I'm going to have a whole lot of competition, which is why I'm just going to become a World of Warcraft classic streamer and just call it a day. So easy. All right. We've got some other news to get to, though, guys. What time is it? All right, are we, are we, are we're, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. We got a little bit of time, we got a little bit of time. I buy a shit ton of games digitally, but also never, uh, but never play, so a monthly service isn't a bad option. Yeah, I think it's a pretty slick option. Uh, so we're gonna change gears just, 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 just a little bit. Just a little bit, it all comes back to World of Warcraft. It does, classic, boy, just, just chipping away at the back of my brain. Uh, so remember a few weeks no several weeks no uh a month couple months ago some time ago but this year um we talked a little bit about riot riot has been uh has had some less than stellar news uh related news coming out of their uh, out of their camp about sexual harassment and all of that shit right and uh and the latest update remember i said we'll follow up with that later well, here we are. It's later. Small follow-up, small update here is that California is investigating Riot Games over gender discrimination, which we knew uh, because that's been going on for a, for a minute. Uh, but it says Riot denies the state's allegations that it isn't being cooperative. So it says here that the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing has been investigating allegations of gender discrimination, assault, and harassment of League of Legends developer Riot, Riot Games. On Wednesday, the department announced it was filing an investigation enforcement suit against the developer to compel it to cooperate with the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, uh, their investigation. So this is, uh, uh, and of course, of course, Riot denies that they're, that they're not um, being cooperative. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, like the state says otherwise, uh, they want to have a list of, of salaries. They want to have, I mean, this is, so while the department's investigation is looking into gender discrimination, generally the DFEH is currently trying to access pay information to analyze the wages of men and women into the, in the, at the company to see if there's a disparity. It says Riot hasn't been cooperative in this instance and is, is refusing to provide that information. Hence the suit. Riot has said that they did provide thousands of lines of information that they specifically asked for. And so it's, 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 it's a little bit of a, he said, she said, yeah, exactly. Who are you going to, yeah. Who are you going to believe, uh, the accused or the investigator? So this is just, just a small update. PC gamer. Um, it's a small update on this. It says we've been at, we've been in active conversation with the DFEH since its inquiry began. If guess investigations like this can arise when there have been allegations of workplace disparity, and we've been cooperating in good faith with the DFEH to address its concerns. During this time, we've promptly promptly responded to the DFEH defez uh, request and have provided produced over 2,500 pages of documents and, and several thousand lines of paid data so far. We've also made several recent requests to the DFE 
participate uh, uh, that the, the DFAT participate in a call with us to address the, their requests. To date, these requests have been unanswered, so we're frankly disappointed to see the DFAT issue a issue a release a press release alleging that we've been non cooperative. We're confident that the we've made a substantial blah 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 blah. They're saying that it's not true. Um, so they're saying they want to get they want to get the government on the phone to talk about things, and we know that. I mean, it even says in the article here somewhere that uh, typically the government likes to have a paper trail, so they're probably not going to get on the phone. They're probably not going to get on the phone and just like hash this out over some over you know over Skype or over Discord, whatever it is the government's using. Probably not Discord. Probably Skype. Maybe even older. Uh, maybe like an actual landline. Um, so it is a. <laughs> It, this is this is just another. Uh, I, I'm, I, I am, I am going to be continuing to follow this. Follow this because this could have some pretty interesting impacts on just video game culture. I guess because if if they do release the information uh, that they actually pull from this for their uh, for their inquiry, which I'm willing to bet under some clause somewhere that information would be available to the public. Um, we can actually see, we might actually see if there really is a disparity between, uh, uh, you know, male and female, you know, pay. And we don't know, we don't know what that, it could go either way, um, or there could be no disparity whatsoever. So, hey, you know, though, hats off to the that press release, uh, those writers always do a bang up job making themselves look innocent. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, I'm suddenly picturing execs frantically shredding paper late at night in, a, in burglar clothing. It's like it's like riot gate. Mm -hmm. um, here's our here's our pay information for our lowest paid men and highest paid women, just like you asked me. <laughs> Maybe uh, I say there are millions of stuff needed. Saying we gave them thousands means nothing. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> The fact that Riot enforces NDAs to keep their employees from talking about pace uh, says volumes. Yes, yes. 13 female California. Speaking of 13 years old, Gittens, great segue. My co-host, this guy right here, this guy right here. You guys know, uh, you guys know a, don't worry, this is not going to weird space. There is a, <laughs> uh, there is a streamer, uh, he plays Fortnite, and he is... 13 years old. His name is High Sky. He's part of the FaZe Clan. Yes, we're talking about FaZe Clan again. Um, and it was recently revealed that he is, the, the kid is actually 12. Now, on certain platforms like Twitch and Twitter, those things are uh, against their terms of service. And we know that he is indeed 12. This isn't just an allegation that he's 12. We know that he's 12. He's under 13. Because his Twitch channel's been banned and his Twitter account's been banned. He made a new Twitter account, probably, I don't know, maybe with the support of the parents or something like that. They followed some other route to do it. Um, but uh, we know that for sure, this is not just speculation. He's definitely under the age of 13. Now... I don't give a shit about this drama. What I find interesting is that there are people who are looking at this saying that it's not right to close down his account and to ban his accounts and everything because he is under the age of 13. It says, this is really unfortunate. I understand having an age limit, but it seems unfair now that Heist Guy, who has been on the platform for over a year and created a possible career out of it, uh, if the ban lasts until he's 13, Fortnite may no longer be the gold mine that it is now. And there's a lot of comments underneath where people are basically going back and forth discussing whether or not it is fair that <laughs> that they that they basically canned him. They, they canned the accounts. Um, on Twitch, if you find out a person is under 13, you're supposed to report them even if they are just in chat. Uh, they don't do their mission thing until after eight. What? What? Oh, this is a different conversation there. Uh, did he break TOS? Then yeah, sorry. Yep. And any winnings he's made from the contests and and the competitions are to be returned. Child labor laws. Yes. Ignorance of the rules is not protection of them. This is basically how any sort of rule system has to operate. If you start making exceptions for the people who are big, then you set a double standard. Zebrius, were you here earlier this uh, this show? I feel like we we we. I feel like you you would have been perfect. For that one, because this does, this does indeed uh, wrap back around to the Dr. Disrespect thing. Um, 
<laughs> his his Twitch account is officially gone, right? We don't think it's coming back, at least not until he's 13. Um, and his Twitter account hasn't has been he has, he has, a, he has a new Twitter account now. Um with only like a, a couple thousand followers or something. So I guess because he's just getting started. Uh, FaZe Banks had stated that no laws were broken. Everything was done legally. Which means that FaZe had the parents consent uh, to sign him uh, to FaZe Clan. And on their end, they didn't do anything illegal. Uh, assuming that you could take Banks' uh, Banks' word for what it is. Uh, the person who outed them was actually t -Few, And we talked about t -Few just a little while, just a little while ago. Um, and part of the lawsuit filed included that, uh, that high sky's age was under, um, but he was under, under the age of 13. Uh, there are stories about how nuts his mom is, but that's a different story. Uh, you can't, you can't. Yeah. So, there are indeed labor laws, right, that protect kids. If, if this, if, let's just say, like, let's just hypothetically say, like, this kid was, um, bagging groceries at, at Vons or something, right? And it, it, it can't, it came to be that, oh, this kid is, uh, is, uh, is too young to be working here. Like, do you say, no, this kid really liked this job. He should be able to stay. Probably not. You probably look at the company and say, like, come on, like you can't, that's fucking illegal. <laughs> like this is, you, you can't just child, child labor laws exist for a reason. Um, and, and yes, and yes, it, like Dark said, they are fairly complex. That gets into public versus private company rules and rulings about regulations. A private company like YouTube, Twitch, et cetera, can set their own rules however they want and they can enforce them however they want because Twitch isn't hiring these guys. Twitch is not, you're, I'm not a Twitch employee. I'm subject to the rules on the platform, but I am not a Twitch employee by any stretch. If I was, I'd be getting benefits. There'd be a lot of other laws that apply, apply as well. Um, and so there is a gray area here. This is why just recently here in California, there was a, um, there was a, there was a, a bill that was passed that talks about, um, what exactly qualifies you to be a, a independent contractor? And if you do or do not qualify for that, will actually impact the way that the company that you're working for, you're working for, you're contracted for, uh, has to um, treat you as an employee in terms of like pay, benefits, all that stuff. Uh, you know, chaos, that is, that's a great point. Oh, sorry. Uh, on the other hand, we have to play games at home all day. How is this more different than having friends over and watching and play? I don't know. This is why I want to talk about this because it's, this is, this is obviously, there's a conflict of interest here, uh, a conflict of opinions here online, obviously here as well. Um, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid playing video games, it's like, or, or think about like with Declan, right? With Declan, if Declan ever wanted to like play on stream, I would probably just let him. I don't know what the rules are for that. I'd probably just let him be like, yeah, dude, just fucking play on stream. I think the chat would love it. Uncle chat would fucking love that shit. Yeah. Come over here. Let's fucking play the game. Um, Again, I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> I know Mini Wheat played with Wheat when he was underage. I don't, I don't fucking know, though, how it applies. Um, but it's not a job for him. It's not his own channel. It's not any of that stuff. Um, in this case, he did have his own channel. He was pulling his own income at the age of 11. Uh, he's done the hard part. His name is out there, and he, wants, and he has people that want to follow him. The day he turns 13, he's well-positioned to restart the career that no other 13 year old could hope for so quickly. Exactly, kittens, exactly. Uh, what happened to get kids just playing games for fun? Why do people think it's okay just to dive into monetizing this poor kid? If you had a kid that could sing really fucking good, you would probably, you'd probably wanna push that kid to continue doing, if they loved it, of course, right? Uh, put him in classes, put him in competitions, doing all that stuff. If you have a kid that's really good at Fortnite, and everybody really, really thinks this kid is like super good at his video game. That's your outlet. Get him onto a platform where you could continue to uh, to develop these skills. Um, a company signing Declan under contract for a certain amount of hours sponsors. Yeah, so that's that's where it gets like the, that's that's where it's the problem. 
Uh, the legislation concerning child employment is quite strict. Firstly, a child under the age of 13 cannot legally be employed unless they work in areas such as TV and theater or modeling. Then there are restrictions on the hours that children can work dur uh, during term time and during holidays. So, I don't know which, what's that, what that's from exactly, but it does say areas such as TV, theater, and modeling. Now, I know they can't name every single platform that would be considered underneath this, but um, we, I don't think we really, really know exactly where Twitch sits in this. Um, child actor laws exist for a reason also. Yeah, I, this, this sounds more like child actor laws would apply here. Uh, whatever those might be, I have no idea. Um, Twitch is both TV and theater. <laughs> it can be. Um, we all know the, that the laws and the internet are not exactly in sync. Yep. I'm a model. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's Twitch TV. Oh man, it's in the it's in the URL, and that's got to be. It. There's age limits in esports in most games. There is. Yeah, there is. There's there's age limits for a lot of things. Um, but. You know, this is this is a situation that I think a lot of people are just like not quite agreeing with. Um, so we had a couple other things we talk about a little bit here. Let's go ahead and actually jump on the uh, uh, the next one here. This is the this is actually pretty interesting. So Google has released Game Builder. It's a game building engine, as the name would probably imply, perhaps. Uh, it is available on Steam, it is free, and it is effectively a game in which you could go in and create games in. Um, the functionality, I think they have a video in here somewhere. Um, okay, they just have a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of GIFs here. But the functionality does feel a little bit like, I mean, obviously it visually looks like Minecraft, but even the coding part, when you think of Minecraft, you pull down the command, uh, the command line or use the command block, a lot of those are just like you type it and you can autofill certain things. It's supposed to basically be a game that you can go through and build other games in a um, um, in a very simplistic manner. Manner. Some of the complaints that people have had uh, are are that uh, like the buildings that you can spawn, you can't go inside. But I think that if those are like if it's not like a cube, like a cube built, like this like this character here is doing. If it's not one of those, then you probably can't go inside of it. But if it is one of those, I think it's pretty pretty cut and dry. You can. Like Dreams. Yeah, like Mario Maker. Like Gary's Mod. Exactly. Um, and it, again, it's free. And it's multiplayer. So from the get-go, you can just jump in with some friends and just make some shit. This is uh, super interesting as a concept because it just feels like it's an open-world environment like Minecraft or Cube Worlds uh, that you could just go in and just start building shit with a bunch of other friends. It almost sounds like a Subnight game in a way. We'll have to look at that later. Um, and lastly, okay. Sam, are you still here? There's some Pokemon drama that I hear is pretty juicy. Now, I don't exactly know enough about Pokemon to know why this is such a big deal. But people, yeah, people people are mad at the Pokemans. So, here's what I know. Six years ago, they spent a lot of money making future-proof models of every Pokemon in the Pokedex. Um, and... I'm not trying to play down this drama, by the way. I'm just being, I'm being honest with you. I would have rather skipped this story, but because I don't, only because I don't fully understand the game and is a, and Pokemon is a very intricate and very, very, um, has a very deep catalog, uh, to it. So it's not something that I want to necessarily just gloss over, which is why I'm tapping in to my co-host here, um, to go ahead and give us the scoop as to why people are mad. I know Sam's typing it up right now. Chances are you can't bring your favorite mons to the new game. Plus, uh, you have to pay a sub to keep them in their online bank until they release a game that you can use them in. So that's pretty fucking cut and dry right there. That is pretty, that's pretty, I think everybody can understand that. Is that you can't, you can't take your games, you take, take your Pokemon to the new game. Um, you have to pay, you have to pay a sub to keep an online bank. Until they release a game you can use them in. So you're basically just paying monthly to store them indefinitely until they until they release 
the the next title. Pokemon XY 2014 and all available Pokemon 700 plus, and it was a nightmare. It also took away from the new Pokemon because I would use uh, what I already liked. Yeah, so uh, they just had a big thing about this bank and how awesome it is, and then the new game doesn't support moving Pokemon in from the bank. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. That is pretty shitty. I can see that. I still don't understand at all why the fans actually be mad at this. The reason why they gave the reason they gave for not having all the mods was the graphics and detail animations. But if you look at the demo at E3, it looks like shit. I wish I could see this emotion here. I mean, just like the bicycle thing looks pretty tacky. All, all of these images actually look pretty tacky. These don't look like in game in engine uh, builds. They look like just photoshopped, like 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 a wow model viewer. I <laughs> just kind of slapped on top. Um, until they decide to make one, don't don't have to uh, make a new one. Uh, but they do keep keep it even if you lapse into the Pokemon game. The ones that I had stored were still other. Okay, well, um, so I can't really comment on this any further. I feel like if you if you are a Pokemon fan, then this would be news that hopefully you. Did not know because now you could be super mad with everybody else. And I would be pissed too. If, uh, especially a game that's this deep, it feels to me like Warframe. It's like if Warframe made another game, uh, or, or they made a system where you could store your frames online or whatever, and you had to pay for it, uh, before you transfer it to another game and then you're paying for it and then you end up, you can't even transfer it to the new game. Like I totally get that. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, if Warframe made Warframe 2 and didn't have Rhino. Yeah. Or, or I guess if they made you pay for a service where you can hold, like hold these characters, but then eventually they're like, oh, well, you can't really import them anyway, so whatever. Um, so please, if this is, if this is, uh, uh, if Pokemon, I'm sorry, I, I have to apologize deeply. I don't, I don't fully understand Pokemon enough to really speak intelligently about it. I play Pokemon Go and that's about it. Um, but I'll tell you what, once my son gets involved in Pokemon, I'm gonna be a fucking expert. This shit is coming. Uh, my problem is that, uh. We don't know um, how uh, the problem with this is that we don't know much about this. They could keep, uh, they could be withholding, oh gosh, uh, info to not spoil stuff or to keep it a surprise. That is true. That is a very good point, Wolf Lines. That is a very good point. Uh, it is something that we'll have to tune in later and find out. Um, there are only 100 if you're doing Pokemon. <laughs> you just gaslighting us? <laughs> Uh, I bought a Switch for Let's Go uh, Pokemon, expecting to be able to carry them forward like the past generations. Oh, see? Yeah. Yeah, see? So, be mad. Um, and let them know that it sucks. Lastly, lastly for today's news, what time is it? Oh, man, perfect. ThinkGeek.com is shutting down, and that's a damn shame. However, its physical stores will remain open. I'm literally just reading the thing here. Uh, thinkgeek.com is, I know, I know. People are super upset. Okay, but seriously, guys, like, <laughs> this is, it was, let's go to actual thinkgeek.com. All right. I get that thinkgeek's got some cool stuff, but really, who, who really goes here and says, I need those things. It's 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 basically an entire collection of wants. Like for example, this set phases the face palm. You could get the bronze edition of Star Trek Next Generation Captain Picard face palm picture in 3D, a bust for seventy dollars, fifty percent off if you use the code. Um, again, this is something that oh my god, is that fucking West? Let me crush it. Oh my god. It's a, it's just a science party. That's a pretty good picture. Uh, a lot, yeah. It's it's a lot of overpriced trash targeted at nerds. It's it's true. It's true. At fifty percent off, and suddenly there's some deals in here. Um, and there are some categories here you could go through and check it out for yourself. We actually before the stream we went through and we checked out a few Minecraft. They have they have a few things on here. If you're a Minecraft fan, I looked at those. I was like, hey, you know what? Thirty four ninety nine for thirty four ninety nine for a Minecraft hat is bullshit, right? I don't even spend thirty four ninety nine for my own hats. Okay. Um, it's snapback. Oh, it might be pretty good quality. I know this is pretty good quality. I still would not pay more than $30 for a hat. $34.99 is pushing it. But 50% off when you use the fucking code free iPhone 4S. <laughs> what is the code? Moving day. Yeah, moving day. Um, and it's site-wide. You go through and you can buy whatever you want for 50% off. 
Plus shipping, yeah. And now all my ads are going to be Think Geek. Well, at least for the next, uh, however long it takes for them to actually disappear. Teenage View, and look at the Nit. See? Okay, this is a fucking great example, okay? You don't need this. Nobody says, oh shit, I need a cheese grater. Let me go to Think Geek. If you buy this cheese grater, you already own a cheese grater that you're not using. You just think this one would be kind of funny to have. <laughs> but if you need to get a cheese grater... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just what I'm saying. Like it's just it's 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 a it's just not there's just no value here uh for any of these things. They're just fun things to have. I mean a warp pipe, piranha plant free, toothbrush holder. It's a $25 cheese grater. Yeah, exactly. How much is a cheese grater on Amazon? Hold on a second, let me pull it up real quick. Amazon.com. They always put your personal shit on here. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, uh, uh, cheese grater. No, not slicer. Grater. Let's see. No, no. All right. God damn it. Every time. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. They always, they always put, I don't understand how they just keep on getting my personal information and post on it incognito. Give me a fucking break. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you ready? Ready for the price reveal? 1189. So you could spend this much, eleven eighty nine, or you could get the shredder one, which I already lost, but for twenty four ninety nine. I heard how much it was. It was twenty four ninety nine? Ridiculous. It's too much, man. With a proper grip, yeah, with a proper grip, <laughs> with a proper grip. Ah, so for fifty percent off, there are a few things I would say. Yeah, you know what? For fifty percent off, I think some of these things might be kind of fun to have, like a like a Pokemon waffle maker. There you go. Yeah, that's a good transition. If I'd have known this existed, it'd be the perfect transition. Um, use <laughs> use my yeah. If you guys need a cheese grater, let me know. I'll get you guys a referral link. Hook me up. Hook me up. So yeah, the, getting this for uh for fifty percent off. Which I actually wait. Am I on the code? Is this with the code already? Probably. Um, it might be useful. Not everybody has a waffle maker. <laughs> And one of the things you buy for a nerdy friend birthday gift. Exactly. Exactly. So Think Geek, Geek, Think Geek is going away. It is unfortunate um, because it's a business and, you know, we want we want nerd nerd businesses to thrive. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of this stuff is overpriced and it's very difficult to justify for certain things, uh, you know, for 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 just general everyday use. I mean, coffee mugs. Sure. Sure. But the but the but the bust, the bust is too much. A question block bin is a, is a, oh, it's a tumbler. What? What is this? It's a ceramic cup for your bathroom. How the fuck do you drink out of a cube? How do you... Like, you can't, you can't really get the angle just right. You have to, like, go kind of crooked, and then you're, like, at the corner. You can't, you, with your corner, you can't even, like, corner it. Apparently, you guys all have cube shaped cube shaped mugs i'm trying to picture how this will work i can't i can't i just can't like your mouth would be like this feels like it'd be weird pour it there you go just ah that's how you do it that's how you're supposed to do it all right that's it that's it for news thank you so much for watching my lovely co-host here Thank you so much for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Sam, thank you so much for stepping in. For stepping in and hook, hooking me up there. And everybody else that helped with the Pokemon stuff. I do appreciate that so, so much. Um, and uh, no channel news? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but that's it. So, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike, a Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. A.k.a. Mike B on all the platforms. And chat. Love you guys. <gasps> Bye.